Hello, I'll show you today how Sparrow runs on uh, uh, Apple MLX uh, backend, uh, running uh, Q12 uh, 72, 72 billion uh, model configuration, uh, which is quantized model with 4 bits. This is the top model that I was able to run on Mini, and I'm using the top configuration with 64 gigabytes of RAM and 20 GPU cores. So let's uh, switch to remote desktop where I actually run uh, uh, run Sparrow as well and where I use uh, uh, MLX backend. Okay, so uh, first of all let's let's see, let's switch here uh, to the monitor where we can see that currently uh, 13 gigabytes of RAM used and the slight GPU usage do, do, uh, probably related to uh, remote desktop sharing. Okay, now let's execute the uh, script where we, this is the query which is executed and then we pass option MLX and we also pass the uh, model name that will be used to execute the query. This is uh, Q1272 billion model with 4-bit contentization as I mentioned before and we pass the actual image file. So we execute that and then if we switch to uh, to, 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 to the monitor where we see the performance, uh, we see that model is loaded and we got uh, RAM uh, was around uh, more than 50 gigabytes RAM was uh, loaded and we see that GPU is being loaded 100%. This means uh, all the execution now, uh, the query execution happens on GPU and while it runs, let's see, this is the actual uh, file uh, actual uh, file that is being processed this is the table with the list of instruments and with other numeric values okay while it runs let's see should be able to to move outside of uh, this remote desktop let's see how uh, okay like this and let's switch to the code here and I in the requ in Sparrow requirements a file I specified that I'm using M MLX VLM uh, this this is the library which works on top of MLX and it enables uh, visual LLM models to be uh, executed on top of MLX on top of uh, uh, M M4 silicon processor and I specify here that uh, if uh, you're installing Sparrow not on a uh, silicon processor, then uh, ignore and this library then will not be installed because it's obviously, it, it, it supports it only on silicon uh, uh, processors. Let's see. Okay, it actually was executed. We got result, <clears throat> which is good. Okay, and we can see that if you switch to resource monitor, <clears throat> uh, all the memory was released because request was processed, it's fine, and here we get the result, uh, valid true, and in this case it actually executed in 70 seconds, and it's a bit slow, but that's because I'm using, uh, let's say, top, uh, the largest model that is possible to run on Mac Mini, and for example, there's no way to run this model on uh, any other uh, consumer hardware, even on NVIDIA, NVIDIA 4090 it would not work because uh, NVIDIA card comes with 24 gigabytes of RAM and here you need around 50 gigabytes of RAM to load the model as, uh, to the visual memory and uh, uh, it's actually a great result I think uh, in this case and obviously for the smaller models it would execute uh, way faster like in a few seconds uh, for the 7 uh, billion per meter models and so on. So. Yeah, we got the result and uh, we got instrument name as we, as we see here and uh, we got uh, valuation uh, which is correct and if you check the last row uh, it's also correct and uh, valuation is correct as well. So this is great. Fine, so let's uh, go back to the code. So that's about requirements and then uh, in Sparrow, I have uh, in Sparrow parse library, uh, I have 
uh, uh, Visual LM Extractor script, which acts as a uh, abstraction layer, <coughs> because uh, in Sparrow I could e we could execute requests not only on MLX but also uh, on uh, NVIDIA GPU, and based on on a parameter flag which is passed uh, together with the query, VLM Extractor constructs configuration request which is being sent uh, to the uh, factory class, inference factory class, and infer inference factory class decides uh, uh, decides which backend to use, either MLX or Hugging Face uh, private GPU or some other uh, local uh, GPU, for example, uh, NVIDIA with P PyTorch backend. Okay, so we construct request here. We also check if it's a multi-page file, if multi-page, and we split into images uh, sent uh, uh, in batch, and then we aggregate uh, the results. Okay, and so the, the, all the logic related to MLX happens uh, under MLX inference using MLX VLM. And we initialize the model. So this is when model is being uh, loaded from file, uh, from disk to, to memory. Then this uh, post-processing uh, logic is applied here. When we get back uh, JSON from Q12, uh, it has some additional text information. We strip it out and we uh, get only uh, pure JSON uh, structured information. Then there is some helper method to load image data. We calculate uh, dimensions uh, that will be used to rescale or downscale the image. And we are downscaling the image with the MLX VLM uh, helper logic. And uh, you must downscale the image because you, if the resolution is quite uh, is high, then you'll just get, uh, get out of memory error. And okay, and this is the main inference. Uh, uh, class which is implemented from the uh, from the super class. Here, what we do, we get the file paths uh, for all the uh, images we want to process in batch. Uh, we construct a, a query uh, or prompt, and we specify uh, here. We, we pass actual query from uh, which we, which is constructed by Sparrow to fetch uh, data from the specific document, uh, to which includes all the fields and so on. Then we apply chat template. This is a MLX specific thing, and then we generate uh, actual response. We specify more uh, tokens to be used for the response construction. Around 4,000 is usually enough for average complexity documents, and temperature is set to zero uh, because we are interested in factual, in actual data uh, from document without any. Uh, interpretation and so on, so we, we want to keep temperature uh, to zero and get actual data as it is from the document. And then we append all the results for all the pages to the array and then finally we uh, return the array, so this is how it works. And yeah, once again I'm uh, quite happy that uh, now we can run uh, not only text models but even visual uh, language models on uh, Apple MLX backend and this opens lots of new uh, use cases and possibilities, uh, especially when new Mac Studio will be available which is, uh, should be a very powerful machine and uh, it will enable us to run uh, those uh, large visual uh, language models uh, probably even faster and we'll be able to deploy the such models to the production use cases. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.